in the previous monthly meeting we had talked about nac and the provisions for including courses and inputs of human values nac and we could see that 178 points were there out of 1000 where we can intervene and that's a good provision we could also see that the core values of nac are quite in coherence with what we are trying to do here trying to build up a value based society value based living so in criterion 1 there is some clause where we have provision for including value based courses value added courses rather i said so uh, we can intervene there also so it just occurred to us that while looking at the complete uh, expanse of intervening in the nac criterion and trying to include as much value inputs as possible there is a good scope of including courses based on human values through value added courses so let us discuss it today and we'll try to keep it explorative and we'll try to discuss it as much as possible in the given time limit so as we are all aware nac is national assessment and accreditation council and now it is a mandate also that every college and university has to have accreditation from nac so it's a good opportunity for us if we can utilize this opportunity it gives us ample scope to make the education value based looking at the core values at, as we had discussed earlier also in the previous meeting if you could look at these five values which are mentioned here uh, they are quite in coherence with what we are trying to do like first one contributing to national development so nation is a part of society and in true sense of the word development of a nation takes place when we are able to fulfill the human goal it is not only through accumulation or it is not at all through accumulation and consumption of physical facilities what is essentially required is prosperity happiness in the human being okay fearlessness in the society so rightly utilizing this opportunity for contributing to national development we can make too much of contribution here then fostering global competencies among students now these global competencies can be in two parts one could be skill the other could be value and we have seen that if we focus on values learning skills imbibing skills rightly utilizing skills is much more convenient isn't it and across the globe also people are looking for such competencies which can help the society to sustain rather than exploit or uh, either human society or the rest of nature if you look at the third criterion third value inculcating a value system among students this is directly in coherence with what we are trying to do then promoting the use of technology so we can see that when we try to expand when we try to take the content forward across the globe when we are working for undivided society and universal human order technology has a good role to play now where to place the technology is very much important so presently also we can see that we are having these regular meetings regular workshop with the use of technology a small glitch in technology uh, disturbs the whole program isn't it many times it does happen when we have a problem with uh, zoom so we are not able to connect properly so it has been useful to us in the pandemic the kind of expanse that could take place in taking this content forward to the society is huge so how to develop such technologies and how to rightly utilize such technologies is also something to be taken care of and then quest for excellence here again excellence as we are saying excellence is right understanding and right feeling so when the system is talking about excellence they may also be looking to skill part but as we can see that skills is secondary the primary part is the right understanding and right feeling so that lifelong learning that quest for excellence isn't it is very much important for a happy and prosperous society so all these core values are quite in coherence with what we are trying to do and if we rightly utilize if we rightly place ourselves and try to utilize the provisions in nac so we'll also get the support of the government support of the system support of management in making education value based i hope we are able to see this now going further if you look at the key indicators so as we had seen last time that there are seven key indicators the first one being curricular aspects now here in 1.1 and 1.2 what is being focused upon is the syllabus uh, that has been put forward in the particular uh, course and program 
added to it we have the minor degree courses but in addition you can also enrich the curriculum by offering value added courses and this is where we can intervene so there could be universities which have been offering the mandatory credit course in human values also offering electives in human values also offering minor degree in human values but if that provision is not there in the college completely not there or partly not there then through this curriculum enrichment section we can still contribute to the education by offering value added courses and this is what we are trying to discuss uh, in today's meeting and you can see that so many marks are allotted for that isn't it so this is what we are going to address in the spectacular meeting the curriculum enrichment part if you look at the criteria 1.3.2 and 1.3.3 so they are talking about the value added courses now what is a value added course essentially so uh, to define a value added course the course must have at least 30 hours of contact hours secondly it does not have to be a part of the regular curriculum in which credits are assigned so there will be no credits for this this is in addition to what is being taught through the regular curriculum and syllabus and thirdly you can always uh, provide certificates so it can be a certification course kind of thing you can provide certificates to the students or to the faculty who uh, attend the faculty development program in such courses so that will be a good help to the system now here you have to provide the data number of times such courses were offered number of students who have completed these courses and then you have to provide the uh, data here for the last 5 years we are going to discuss this particular thing so as i mentioned the value added courses are not a component of the regular curriculum but they are in addition to that and there is some stipulated time that has to be given so we can offer these courses in the extra hours uh students can pick such courses through their own interest <clears throat> and there are students who are interested in fact let me say that when i was doing btech then i was looking for such inputs when i went through the whole syllabus and the curriculum for btech there uh i could see that not much is to be uh, found out which could suit my interest so we i am there and i think like me many other students are there so what we try to do we look for other nooks and corners where we can get something valuable which can resolve our which can fetch satisfying answers to our questions and then we look into the co curricular extra curricular activities we look into the social fulfillment activities we try to get in touch with uh, resource persons outside the campus who visit us and offer lectures uh, which are organized by the gymkhana so we keep on looking and i think many students must be there who keep on looking for such inputs so this is a very good channel a very good opportunity to bring such courses which the students will value and which will be valuable to the whole system now there are certain value added courses based on human values which we are proposing here it's not necessarily that the courses which can be termed as value added have to be based on human values you can offer courses in any discipline of engineering design management you know any other stream uh, but here we are uh, sharing the list of courses and this is not an exhaustive list let me say it is just a basket we can add uh, many more courses here but when you are offering any such course then you have to have some syllabus of the course and you have to get it approved from the management okay so that the management can certify the students who have gone through these courses so most of the courses that we are sharing here are already a part of the minor degree courses now in minor degree or in our regular curriculum the course if it is having three credits has to have minimum 42 hours of contact and here we are focusing on 30 hours of contact so what we have done here we have split such courses into two parts or even maybe more than two to make it more explorative so we have the course uhv3 uh this uhv3 course essentially is titled as understanding human being nature and existence comprehensively uh we have split it into two parts here to be offered as a value added course then uh we are doing practice session uh, every day in the morning so that can also be made as a uh, value added course for the students 
when we can make them go through exercise one and two this is going to be quite useful many students come to me and ask that, that i want to do meditation what could be the right technique what could be done here many students are interested they have some inclination also in that direction so but the present curriculum does not offer any kind of passes for them where they can choose the right direction isn't it so if we are able to offer such course where they can go through exercise one and two that is that is going to be very much helpful to them then uh, we have uh, an elective course which is also part of the minor degree called as vision for human society and we can split it into two parts in the first part we can talk about the human human relationship and in the second part we can talk about the systems of a harmonious society so one part could be like understanding human human relationship and its fulfillment and the second would be systems for undivided society universal human order and human tradition now in these kinds of courses there will be ample scope for making it as much explorative as possible making it project based giving assignments to the students uh, letting them explore through the literature through the uh, visits in the society and find out whatever is relevant for these inputs now we have been offering courses in universal human values but in addition uh, if anybody is interested in understanding a particular darshan a particular philosophy so we can offer courses which can allow them to go through various philosophies either in the east or the west then uh, we can also offer courses on holistic human health so in the course uh2 which we are offering as a mandatory course in the second year there is one module on health but uh, this is something of prime concern to the students and we can give them a holistic vision of health how to ensure health i have often seen that if there are let's say 30 students in a class or 60 students in a class uh, it's very rare that all the students are present in the class even during the examination and something or the other keeps on happening somebody has a loose stomach somebody has cold and cough somebody has you know something else and the health part is not ensured so can we develop that kind of understanding and vision let me say that i got this sore throat because i was trying to have walk in the evening uh, and then i was exposed to cold so now in addition to uh, offering a course on holistic human health we can uh, share inputs on yoga and naturopathy which is a particular stream of uh, health system then we can also offer some course on ayurveda and traditional health practices if you go to explore you can see that not only ayurveda there have been many traditional health practices there and many more are there and they are also being taught now by the government properly recognized by the uh, affiliating agencies then we can offer courses in humanities which can be value based for example psychology sociology economics we are already teaching but mostly in these courses what we are doing we are sharing theories which uh, articulate the way of living of the society today actually they evaluate they make an appraisal of what people are the way are they living but we are rarely able to focus on what they really want to be for example in psychology we try to uh, develop thesis about how people get conditioned okay and how conditioned people work but we seldom focus on the natural acceptance part that there is something that the human being really wants to be and if one is not able to focus on that particular thing then the conditioning is going to take place so our job is not to just make an appraisal of the current state of the human being but also to look into the natural self isn't it generally we will see that in psychology in the very beginning it is told that whatever theories are being proposed here are not meant for two kinds of people one insane and the other sense so it means that the person who is living with right understanding and right feeling uh, is termed as a saint and then these theories do not really uh, apply to these people so can we have courses which can be humane and which can deal with psychology similarly about sociology there have been multiple attempts in the history to organize the society now how can the society be organized with the right understanding of human goal similarly we have been offering courses in economics but unless we have the right understanding of the needs of the self and the body uh, whatever we try to take forward is not going to ensure the feeling of prosperity in the human being nor the fulfillment with the rest of nature so these courses are already there in the basket of uh, electives for the minor degree and we can uh, 
make these courses available as a value added course also with the minor degree is not being offered by the university or the college then <clears throat> students are already going through courses in technologies or production systems or management now here we can share inputs in holistic technologies or holistic production systems or holistic management models and share such case studies which can exemplify how the technology can be holistic or how the production system can be holistic for example they are designing a product okay now not every product design requires high tech equipment or high tech knowledge we can see that what matters more is empathy the ability to feel for the other i just got a video recently where one uh, school boy has developed a cutter which is used for cutting uh, sugar cane and that cutter is designed in such a way that you can also peel off the sugar cane and cut it also that saves the hand also from getting scratched or cut and it's very good it does not require much of technology it only requires one concern one's concern and one can develop it also at one's own end similarly i am aware of one organization called gyan gujarat innovation and uh, augmentation network gyan g i a n and they have a wing called honey bee network so as the bee collects honey through nectar from different flowers what they do they have their volunteers and they have a proper channel for that who collect such innovative ideas from different uh, areas of the country and generally the ideas that they get are from uh, rural areas or adivasi areas where people have been trying to develop such products or such technologies which can be of use to them for example if somebody has to go up the pine tree okay so how to go up the pine tree such a long tree so they have been able to develop such device or how to uh, uh, do plowing without much of uh, human labor how to uh, har this harvest the crops uh, through some tools and devices which can be much more user friendly so we can offer such inputs in the class and we can also ask the students to surf over the net visit local areas and try to look into the problems that people are facing and how they can be resolved through such technologies and products similarly every technology is a part of a production system when it goes into production so uh, we can see there are multiple examples of production systems to fulfill our needs of the body for example food now the food comes through a whole production system there is a whole cycle the whole system is there so can we have food production through a channel which can be holistic which takes care of the human being as well as the rest of nature and then we can go through such typical case studies then we can also look into the fulfilling fulfillment of the needs of the body in terms of clothes shelter instruments and we can look into the look into the complete production system how the complete production system can be humane similarly we have multiple cases of uh, study for management okay one particular example being cooperatives so this course like uh, management by relationship and as a typical case cooperative enterprises this was offered when we had this mtech program in punjab technical university so this course can also be taken up then as a particular case of holistic production system we have agricultural system so how can we cultivate how can we produce food in a natural manner ecologically viable manner without disturbing the nature rather fulfilling the nature and there have been several attempts across the history in different parts of the globe where people have been trying to develop such agricultural practices which can be fulfilling to the nature as well as human being but we are generally not exposed to them so the exposure can be given with facts and figures this also instills confidence in the student that yes uh, our history has been full of such noble efforts and we can learn too much from history then uh, there is one particular course called as non violent communication we came across a team which offers such courses and there is a proper website for this which is called as nvc uh, like through such courses it so happens no that we talk about the feeling of trust respect care but once we go through these courses then our exploration becomes much more deeper through our expression or through our evaluation of expression we are also able to detect our feeling that is underlying the expression so it can mold your behavior it can mold your personality isn't it so these courses can be offered 
then we have been talking about sustainable development circular economy isn't it very recently the circular economy has uh, become a kind of buzzword in all the international meetings so how can we develop our students as entrepreneurs for sustainable development and there comes the social enterprise our students are trying to become technical experts okay and they are trying to become entrepreneurs in the field of technology or management but can we have something called social enterprise for example somebody has to become the leader of a village isn't it so can our education also is is still this kind of confidence skill understanding feeling in the student which enables him or her to take up this kind of responsibility somebody has to own the responsibility in the system isn't it so they can go ahead and own such responsibilities they can also make some ngos and then work for a particular sector which is deprived or not so privileged so what will be the principle and practice there so again the course title is social enterprises principle and practice was offered by punjab technical university and we can take up this course also then a course titled <coughs> science and humanism was offered by iit delhi by professor r r gaur and professor p l dhar and here we have ample scope to make an evaluation of the current state of development in the prevalent science if you can see uh, in the 20th century many developments took place in the early part of the century like the general theory of relativity came then special theory of relativity came then quantum theory came okay uncertainty principle was there and so many developments took place and there were so many conclusions that could be drawn so one important conclusion was that you cannot predict a physiochemical activity completely because there is always some uncertainty involved another conclusion that came was that uh the observer is a part of the observed so you cannot be a pure observer now these are the particular limitations that came out through the researches in science and then there was the chaos theory where it appeared that if you are not able to study the nature precisely then it is going to be chaotic and your predictions may be completely chaotic so with those limitations in science if you are able to share the appraisal of the current state of development of science with the students and then show to them how we can utilize the developments in science and technology for humanity being aware of the limitation of science because if you are trying to study physiochemical world through physiochemical instrument it is of course going to be having limitations because the knower is the self which is not physiochemical isn't it and if you are not addressing that then the developments in science could be catastrophic also and you can see the world wars that took place in the 20th century uh, they they happened and these developments in science contributed to that isn't it so how can we connect the two development is a science with humanity so this is another course where we can intervene so these are possible courses the list could be even longer so there have been attempts and we can make the attempts even better we can make it much more fruitful now going further we can have a look briefly at all the courses what could be included in these courses so hv3 where we are addressing understanding human being nature and existence comprehensively so we can split it in two parts uh, to make it a course within the limit of 30 hours so uh, we can introduce the course and then we can talk about the right understanding part where the human being is the knower the self is the knower the known is the whole existence and the process is awakening to the activity of contemplation understanding and realization and then while talking about the human being we can have an extensive discussion on the self where we can explain all the activities of the self and help the students to relate to that this course can be much more explorative now talking about the existence we can talk about the submergence of nature in space in much more detail and then based on this understanding what would be the human conduct and how the human being can get resolution which can be all encompassing and how the holistic way of living can emerge from here can be discussed now the practice exercise that we are doing in the morning that can be taken as a evaluated course for the students also so there are three exercises here seeing the self by the self seeing the body by the self seeing the coexistence that is the space 
by the self coexistence and space i'll say by the self now here the consciousness is observing the coexistence in the third exercise in the first one the consciousness is observing the consciousness in the second exercise the consciousness is observing the material the core thing that is being addressed is that uh, one needs to see that happiness is the innate nature it is to be ensured through right understanding right feeling and not through external influences isn't it now we will see that across the history okay people have been trying to share the knowledge with the society many people have been able to uh, also reach a state where they are able to say that yes i am in a state of bliss but somehow the human tradition could not be set up and the major reason being there is that we try to look for happiness from outside and that's how we are not even able to verify the proposals that have been put forward in the tradition because we get caught up in the external influences so that major shift has to take place and if we can enable our students to go through these exercises so maybe the exercise 3 can be exempted because it requires much more preparation but exercise 1 and 2 can be shared with the students and they can be allowed to discuss their observations as we are doing in the morning sessions so this can also be a course which will involve at least 30 hours then we have this course title as vision for human society is split into two parts so in the first part we can introduce the course and we can talk about the human human relationship so talking about the human relationship in the second year course we are just talking about the established nine values trust respect affection going up to love but then there are some expressed values also which are associated with these values for example if you have the feeling of trust then i am able to accept the other i am able to work with the other i am able to feel for the other isn't it now th that comes into my expression if i am having the feeling of trust similarly when i am having the feeling of respect that is right evaluation that appears in my expression as transparency in my conduct so these expressed values can also be discussed and then we can talk about the different relationships in the family okay like parent child relationship friend friend relationship husband wife relationship different kinds of relationship and how we can ensure mutual happiness in each of these relationships and then we can talk about ensuring justice relation in the relationship leading to culture civilization and human conduct so this whole thing can be discussed in one course this would be one part in the second part we can talk about justice from family to the world family so that the whole world becomes a family we can have an undivided society and universal human order and then what would be the systems which would ensure this kind of society so we can discuss extensively about the system of education sanskar what would be the primary education what would be the secondary education what would be the role of parents teachers students in these systems what would be the role of government in these systems similarly talk about the system of health and self regulation production work exchange stories we can have an extensive discussion on all these uh areas in the society and we can also offer students to explore certain systems which are prevalent look into the systems which have been there in the society for example exchange is coupled with distribution and if you look at our history we can see that we have a history of a uh, system where people have been distributing physical facilities with a feeling of relationship and through distribution the needs of the society are getting fulfilled so we can study those kinds of systems also and going ahead we can talk about the human tradition what would be the steps of universal human order starting from family order and going up to the world family order and how it can be there in the society generation after generation now having talked about the universal values we can talk about the human values in different philosophies different versions now you can see that in the universal human values course we are talking about the essence that came out through various philosophies across the globe across the history now in particular darshans they have their own literature they have their own concepts words vocabulary their meaning definitions so now reading such darshan could bring about the world vision that is being proposed there so what is a human being what is this existence what is the difference between material and consciousness or space what is relationship so whatever has been proposed through various darshans that can be studied 
and the process to understand the process to see can be made out then what would be the world vision based on these values which are being proposed in different versions and what is the program for fulfilling the human purpose starting from individual level to the societal level isn't it so these things can be studied and we'll see that every darshan sabhi has its own postulates has its own uh, way of defining things and many times when we are using a particular word the same word has been used in different philosophies in different ways for example the word sanskar that we are using in uh, the course on human values universal human values so we are talking about sanskar as the collection of acceptances in the imagination of the self now uh, if you look at buddhism it has a different meaning of sanskar okay so uh, the kind of uh, meaning that we associate with a particular thing that becomes a sanskar so the same word can have different meanings in different darshan now going through these uh, two things are there we start looking at the reality from different angles isn't it and second thing many times by using the same word multiple times we are not able to focus on the meaning for example we have been talking about relationship harmony and coexistence now it becomes a kind of repeated word for us okay not to look into the meaning when we try to look from different darshans we get a different vision a different uh, way of getting clarity so that is also a help that uh, we get through various darshans so such courses can also be offered but the core has to be that ultimately out of all these studies the harmony has to evolve isn't it the harmony has to evolve and we have to keep the courses explorative not relying or not accepting as it is or not assuming as it is whatever is being proposed in any particular darshan but trying to verify it on one's own right then only these courses are going to be helpful so we have a list of such darshan here which are there in front of us so if you look at the vedic darshan it has nyay vaisheshik sankh yog vedant darshan then there is a recent development called madhyas darshan uh, which emerged in the 20th century and we can get clarity on several counts through this darshan the understanding of the self the understanding of the existence and the role of human being in the existence through madhyas darshan it has been very clear we can study madhyas darshan also then traditionally we have jain darshan and bodh darshan which uh, emerged in india and we can study that also so the practice to observe one self has come out very uh, clearly in bodh darshan isn't it so we can get clarity from here also then there have been developments across the globe like in islam christianity sikhism western philosophy in china two philosophies came up one is taoism and the other is Confu confucianism <clears throat> so if you look at taoism it is somewhat similar to <coughs> bodh darshan and there is a person called lao tzu he has written a book basically he is not written by himself it is a collection of his sayings and that is named as dao de jing it is worth reading so we can get exposure to such inputs also which have been there as a development in the human history then we can also go through popular contemporary philosophy so this is a kind of basket of such courses and we can pick courses as per the interest of the students and they can go through this then we can talk about holistic human health we had a brief introduction about health in our which we two course but we can have an extensive study uh, in this course where we talk about human health in a holistic sense and we can look at the guidelines and principles uh, for universal health now when we go to programs like intake and daily routine labor and exercise postures for regulating the internal and external body organs and breath and then we can go for medication and treatment here again we can talk extensively about the intake the daily routine the labor that is required the exercise that one can go for isn't it and then we can also take this discussion forward to ensuring healthy environment in the family society and nature and also the health systems that are required to ensure this kind of practice in the society 
So what do you think? Is there a scope for offering such value-added courses in your college or university? Kumar Bhaiya, Namaste. Ji, Namaste. That I have uh, joined in Tripura Ikpai University. They are also doing something on NAC uh, preparation. And I have I have al already mentioned about these UHB courses here. How can we proceed? So first of all, you can go for the induction program, which is huh. there as a mandate from AICT. And if the colleges are affiliated to AICT also in that university, huh. then huh. you can share the mandate of the uh, AICT. You can huh. uh, tell them that this induction program is mandatory, even the course in the second year is mandatory. Hmm. So they can, you can start from there and then we can go further. If they are working for NAC, then you can share this kind of input to them that uh, such value-added courses can also be taught. For example, scope in NAC. In fact, if you look hmm. at the NAC, it is not addressing only the teaching and learning process. Huh. It's trying to focus on the holistic development of the human being. As a particular stream of holistic health system, we have yoga and naturopathy. So, like the Yoga Sutras have been proposed in Patanjali uh, textbooks. And then uh, there's a particular lifestyle that emerges from there. There's something called Bahirang Yoga and then Antarang Yoga. And then there are uh, practices of yogic, naturopathic, and modern dietetics, which can be studied. The mental health is an important issue nowadays. And yoga and naturopathy can be of good help on of ensuring mental health. And then we can also apply yoga in different walks of life, different fields, and then the treatment part. So this all can be studied briefly. In fact, students can get to learn about their body, the kind of constitution that the body has, whether it has vat, pit, or cuff, and how to keep the body healthy. Then they can also study Ayurveda and traditional health practices. This can also be offered as a value-added course where they can get to learn about simple treatments of simple elements in the body. So when we learn about Ayurveda, we come to know about various herbs and the traditional medicinal practices, which can be quite useful, isn't it? So the concepts in Ayurveda, like the Panch Mahabhut or Lok Purush, uh, Samayavad, all these can be understood. The Tridosh, Vat, Pit and Kaf, that can be studied. And then the diseases that are there and the treatment part, Briefly, this can be taught because we are not experts in this area, but we can give an exposure to the students in these areas. And then you can also talk about the traditional health practices such as Siddha system, Unani system. I, while making this PPT, learned about Soa Rikpa system. This is something that emerged in Tibet, and this is being practiced in Himachal Pradesh, Uttaranchal, and neighboring areas of Jammu. So uh, we can have introduction to these kinds of inputs also. We'll see that in every system, there's some particular uh, thing which can be useful to us. So in particular system, maybe the problems related to uh, cuff can be treated better. In certain systems, the problems related to the stomach can be treated better. In some systems, the problems related to bile can be treated better, isn't it? So by learning all these systems, we can get a good exposure about health. Then we can have courses on humanities the psychology, sociology, and economics, as you we were mentioning. So with the understanding of consciousness okay, and getting to know about the full human potential, we can make an appraisal of the current concepts in psychology. Many of them are quite useful. Many of them can be still uh, verified and explored. And then we can look into the way forward with this understanding. Similarly, uh, there have been various theories and hypotheses in sociology various attempts to ensure harm in the society. If you look at the various revolutions that have taken place in India and abroad, the French Revolution, Russian Revolution, American Revolution. So there have been certain isms behind that, isn't it? And they have been influencing the world in the past as well as in the present. Even today, we have different theories of sociology that are being practiced by different nations in the world. So the students can get an exposure to this. And then with understanding of human goal, they can see how they can intervene, isn't it? <clears throat> Similarly, the current uh, course in on making profit generation, profit maximization, but it can have a different shape also by understanding the feeling of prosperity, the needs of the self and the body distinctly. We can have 
the inputs in economics which can connect the two the formulations and the theories and the equation that have been developed in the current economics courses they can be mapped with the understanding of human goal isn't it then we can have courses in holistic technology production systems and management models so some generic criteria are there like the technology that we are using has to be eco-friendly and human friendly but we can also add some specific criteria like catering to real human needs compatible with natural systems and cycles facilitating effective utilization of human body animals plants if you look here as i was mentioning uh, there have been various designs various technologies which are quite useful and they are somewhat getting lost because people not even exposed to that as it is said no the millennials are not even aware of such attempts in the history because their life has begun with uh, internet and mobile and whatsapp so they are not even aware of such attempts in the history and even the attempts that are being made in different parts of the world which are remotely located so they can be exposed to such technologies such useful ideas and techniques and then we can study the typical case studies similarly about production systems so for making the production system sustainable holistic what would be the criteria should we go for centralized systems or decentralized systems we can open platform for discussion here so the need of the food okay can it be fulfilled locally need for gadgets like this zoom the app that we are using right now it does not have to be produced locally it can be produced in one part of the globe and maybe many people are going to use it but if you have to produce food we of course need to produce it locally so what would be the specific criteria for developing such production systems which can be termed as holistic and we can then go through typical case studies in this direction now if you look at a uh, particular case studies where you can offer the students to go for projects also like they can study biofuels so you just see we have been using fossil fuels for a long time and now every government is saying that the fossil fuels are going to exhaust they are no longer going to be available so we have to shift to sustainable technologies for uh, for example in india you know, we are trying to turn towards electric cars we are trying to turn towards uh, liquid hydrogen based uh, energy sources biofuels so we have to study all these techniques isn't it then technology that can be helpful for the rural areas for the rural habitat now there is something called uh, uh, like there is one sanitation uh, technique uh, which was used in uh, bihar extensively so how to produce energy through the fecal matter okay now such techniques are already there somebody in chennai one professor has developed a technique for converting plastic into a uh, product which can be used for making roads isn't it if somebody is aware of his name you can share here so there are various case studies which can be done in rural transportation animal husbandry wood work similarly the systems like town planning municipal services rural production systems watershed management this watershed management is very important in areas where we have scarcity of water people have been able to replenish the area through watershed management in chatisgarh i do remember in odisha in madhya pradesh there have been several attempts by the government for watershed management and through these techniques the migration of the people has stopped to a large extent otherwise the people had to migrate to urban areas where they were exploited so so much of important as uh, it carry isn't it what will the system for local self governance now talking about the holistic management models again we can look at various uh, models that have evolved so how can an organization work as a well knit family how can we be cooperative how can we motivate each other how can we be mutually fulfilling to each other now you can see that in organizations much of energy and time is wasted away when we do not have the feeling of relationship so can we manage through relationship can we have harmonious employer employee relationship or it is only going to be hire and fire kind of thing so we can study various cases also here you know where attempts have been made now a course similar to this has been offered by punjab technical university when it was offering uh, the course in mtech for holistic systems and technologies so 
uh, there were inputs about cooperative enterprises and cooperative movement has been quite uh, visible in our country particularly in maharashtra now if you can base such efforts such enterprise on right understanding it can be much more fulfilling isn't it cooperatives we have been able to develop employment or offer employment to the rural population we have been able to uh, make resources available in remote areas of the country isn't it even today ngos and cooperatives are working so we can make a swot analysis in such courses and then we can uh, show the road ahead isn't it how to go ahead see when we are talking about undivided society it takes a whole lot of effort to make the society undivided and all these inputs are going to be useful there then we can talk about eco friendly agricultural practices particular case study of holistic production system so there are two farming techniques one is natural and the other is organic and it has some difference so how we can promote natural farming basically in natural farming what we are saying that the inputs for farming can be made naturally available in place of preparing them separately they can be naturally available the field so what are the practices principles and advantages of these practices we can talk about the history of farming in india and we can also look into the various case studies even today many people are there okay if you surf the net there also you can see many people are there who are practicing natural farming who are practicing organic farming so the students can get an exposure many students come from rural background where their parents have been farmers and they feel that this farming is a business of loss but uh, let me assure you that there are farmers who have been able to do farming in such a manner that they are able to sustain themselves much better isn't it i'll not name these people here on this platform but if you just surf the net you can get so many names where people have been cultivating successfully geeta ji bhaiya what is the difference between natural farming and organic farming bhaiya in natural farming the manure that is to be used or whatever uh, insect repellent that is to be used is made available in the field itself by mm -hmm. particular techniques while in organic farming we prepare things separately and then put into the fields so you prepare manure separately and then uh, dump it into the fields but in natural farming you make the manure making process uh, viable in the field itself do not have to do it separately similarly for insect repellent so this kind of difference is there okay okay so a better Thank alternative you. is to go for natural farming let me name one person whom i have come across there is person called subhash palekar ji so he has been doing natural farming for a long time in fact there is one person called fukuoka he was there in japan and he has also written a book maybe a book has been compiled by looking at his efforts that book is called as one straw revolution and he used to call his farming practices do nothing farming it is something of the sort of natural farming itself so what he used to do he made embankments across uh, on the uh border of the field so that the rain water that was there in the field was not wasted away it was stored there itself and then he developed a culture of microorganisms in the field so that the manure making process takes place in the field by itself hmm. so we can look in fact when you surf on the net and uh, look for the book title as one straw revolution you can get this book the pdf is available and the person is called as fukuoka similarly acha, i am one person in india subhas palekar ji and there are many more persons okay. acha ji in these so, courses we can give an exposure to the students they can go also if the efforts are there in the local areas and just have an exposure meet these people look into their confidence yeah there is one person called namba jawar in tamil nadu ji very nice dia there are several such examples then i was mentioning about a course for non violent communication so if you also surf on the net for non violent communication it is also called as nvc so there are four components here observations feelings needs and requests so through these four components how empathy can be developed how self empathy as well as empathy for the other can be developed and what can be the behavior emerging out of non violent communication so basically we need to have mutually fulfilling communication isn't it essence is that how to have mutually fulfilling communication and these inputs are quite useful 
In fact, we organized one workshop on NVC in Kanpur also, and the faculty went through it, found, found out quite useful. They are able to pay attention to their behavior, their choice of words in a much more better way after going through this workshop. Then we can have entrepreneurship or sustainable development. So we have been talking about sustainable development. Now, how can our students turn into entrepreneurs for sustainable development? How can they take up challenges in the society? How can they represent a section of society and try to develop them? So this kind of confidence can be instilled in the students through these courses. A similar thing is social enterprises. This course was offered again in the MTech program at PTU, Punjab Technical University, and a similar concept is being discussed here. So how can make the how can we make the social enterprises economically viable? How can we develop leadership skills in the students? How can we go for accounting and financial management of such efforts? Then one course was offered in IIT Delhi, Science and Humanism, where as I was mentioning earlier, we can look into the limitations of the current day science and how we can transgress those limitations through understanding of human values, how we can make radicalization of developments in science and technology for the human society. So this kind of input can be shared here in this particular course. Then in addition to this, we can offer courses in Indian knowledge systems, the developments that have taken place in our human history in India. So we have been talking about Vasudha Kutumkam. We have been talking about human society. So the literature that is available with this motivation, the students can go through that. Then we have been able to make advancement in science, technology, engineering, and we have been doing that. So the students can go through that. Then in town planning and architecture, okay, our architectural techniques were quite developed. The excavation that take place exhibit how developed our architecture was. Then also we have been able to uh, uh, do advancements in mathematics and astronomy. Even in music, art, you know, uh, sculpture, dance, many aesthetic sense, aesthetic uh, developments have taken place. The Indian earth Shastri is there that can also be studied. And then in health, as you were mentioning about Ayurveda, naturopathy, or traditional systems. So the students can go through these courses. And then there is another basket of courses available here. We can talk about metal working, science and technology. We can talk about logic. In India, the logic system was quite developed. Then we have been also uh, working for developing linguistics and phonetics, like the Paninese grammar is there. I hope you are aware of this name. Then our administration system, the developments in physics, chemistry, biology, okay. and other courses are also there. So the students can get an exposure to the development that have taken place in the Indian history through these courses. Now, what is the strategy for implementation? If you look at this, so we can offer valued courses in areas where regular or elective or minor degree courses are not available. So the courses that we talked about, if there are no regular courses there, or even as elective is not there, or even the university is not offering minor degree, but we want to take this input to the students. So these valued courses are a good opportunity. No? And if we uh, develop ourselves in such a way that we are able to take the content forward in a satisfactory manner, this will help shape the whole institution in a very harmonious manner. But do get the courses and their syllabus approved from higher authorities. And we can also conduct faculty development programs in a self-finance mode. If you go for self-finance mode, then offering such development programs is also simple. In fact, the university where I was teaching earlier, so, uh, in fact, we have Sarath here. He only proposed that when we had the invigilation duty, so the examinations used to take place over two weeks and we had to do seven to eight <coughs> invigilation duties during the examinations. So, we proposed that uh, we'll do invigilation duty in the first half. In the second half, let us do faculty development program. And the management agreed to it. At zero cost, we could develop many faculty there. At a time, uh, like we had more than one. 20 or 130 faculty who had gone through the workshops, human values workshop, without any extra cost to the university by using such provisions. So we can have such faculty development programs. And then we can give the certificates to the students who attend these courses. Because if the students get a certificate, then they also feel that their input or their effort has been valuable to them. Then we can encourage the students to go through at least one value added course every semester or every year. 
this is also quite possible now the government is also emphasizing on uh, making the colleges and universities autonomous in place of making them uh, as a constituent college or as a affiliated college they are trying to develop them in such a way that they become autonomous and when we get autonomy we have this kind of freedom to add more and more courses in fact in some of the institutions i have heard that the faculty have been asked to go through at least one course online every semester isn't it so in addition to that or as a substitute we can have the students and faculty go through the value added courses which can be even be much more enriching and then we can offer classes in the off hours so this kind of provision is there we can write it like these provisions so this is all that i have to share from my side yeah so you have listed several courses and almost all of them are useful do we have a prerequisite for the faculty members also to conduct such programs as you said we can have this fdps also to train faculty members for such uh, courses so if there are some regular training programs because uh, for example for one particular course a few faculty members from institute may be ready to take up the course and uh, conduct the program in the institute so if there are some training institutes which are offering such programs as uh, faculty development programs that also would have been nice to train faculty members for such programs certainly bhaiya in fact uh, we started this course uhv3 on swayam this particular motive but somehow it is presently a self paced course so through swayam also uh, we can have these courses being offered to the faculty and we are also planning to have face to face workshop before the pandemic we are conducting workshop for uhv3 and uhv4 so that can be restarted so uh, there is provision for uh, organizing such faculty development programs in the face to face mode we want to have uhv3 and uhv4 generally in the face to face mode so that uh, a deeper understanding can be developed but if that provision is not there or we are not able to organize such fdps and there is a, a, a long time gap then we can also have these conducted online we will give ample time for exploration and we will give exercises where faculty can study at their end so through swayam is one scope where we can intervene and then through face to face workshop we are planning to conduct some workshop this year at least for at least one workshop for uhv3 and 4 in fact in august we had one uhv3 workshop that was organized at lucknow so whenever it is planned bhaiya uh, we all will come to know of it we can propose it ji 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 bhaiya so uh, regarding uhv3 and uhv4 as you said the swayam courses are also available uh, the other programs other courses which you mentioned during your uh, presentation what is the source yes, yeah. through which uh, we can yeah. ji we conducted online fdp for human values in various darshans like the vedic darshan mm -hmm. sankh uh, bodh and jain darshan and there is one recording available for human values in madhya darshan so these three resources are already available and we mm -hmm. can go through them we can uh, look into the videos nice yeah. and we are regularly having inputs in holistic health systems every friday for ayurved one course was offered by uh, akhilesh ji who is a faculty of ayurved in chatisgarh and that is recorded also so maybe you can look for the link akhilesh ji was there and sharma didi was also there in that course thank you so much for an enlightening and enriching session on value added courses based on human values for nice thank you kumar bhaiya thank you so much thanks vidhi and happy new year to each and everyone